Pennsylvania Dutch, Night Before Christmas by Chet Williamson from Elizabethtown. It's illustrated by James Rice and was published by Pelican Publishing in 2000. It's a parody of Clement C. Moore's 1823 classic, A Visit from St. Nicholas, which of course we know better now as The Night Before Christmas. Instead of Santa Claus, this version features the traditional Belschnickel. <laughs> the Pennsylvania Dutch figure of a crotchety old man, thin and bearded, wearing a long coat down to his feet, who visits children before Christmas and rewards or punishes good or bad behavior. Instead of coming down the chimney, he usually knocks on the door, is admitted by parents, and then grills children on their behavior during the past year. Let's see what happens in this version. The Pennsylvania Dutch, Night Before Christmas. It was night before Christmas, when all over the farm, nothing was shushling, no cause for alarm. The socks were all hung by the chimney, just so, with the hopes that they gilled, filled up from ankle to toe. The nicksnutzes were snoozing without any sign. In their heads, clear toy candies been dancing around. And Mama and me, well, the art and delight crawled under the covers and snuggled up tight. Then from the outside, we heard something fierce that made open our eyeballs and rattled our ears. There was crashing and banging. And could it be true? Did our ears deceive us? Or was that a moo? Then off to the window, he ran in the dark. Kicked the dog accidental. He started to bark. Then we looked through the window, coming in through the gate. It wasn't one moor we saw, it was eight. <laughs> four cars and four steers, they were harnessed somehow and were dragging behind them an old fashioned plow. And there just behind it, as sour as a pickle, was a fella we knew had to be the bell schnickel. <laughs> he wiggled that plow to keep going on course. I think he'd done better if he had, had a horse. <laughs> so doppling and slow those eight dummers did run. And he growled and he grumbled and he yelled at each one. Nah, Jakey, nah, Becky. No, Rachel, Josiah, on Menno, on Sarah, Esther, Obadiah, and watch where you're going. There's nothing unviser than stamping your hoofs into stray fertilizer. <laughs> they got through the barnyard without any hitch, and the Bill Schnickel grumbled and raised a big switch. Climb up on that roof now. And you make it snappy. You don't want to make me no more unhappy. <laughs> Mock off on that trellis, then to the porch roof. And don't get no ivy wines caught in your hoof. I'll get awful grisly if you make me fall. So clamber up, clamber up, clamber up all. Like the chickens all look, then they fly, they're trying. <laughs> or the mess kids make, then their shoes they're tying. So clumsy they climbed, up an inch with each moo. But somehow they made it, <laughs> and it wonders me how too. And then in Twinkle, we heard on the roof, each cow was rooching round, stamping its hoof. Creaks of the roof timbers filled all our ears because it just wasn't built for four cars and four steers. By now, all the kitties had run in our room, frightened by all of those creaks and cracks and moons. 
tell them what happened I was going to begin, then chomping, chahoosing, the ceiling fell in. Down came the bell schnickle, plop, in our bed. A few shingles making Don right on his head. And then we looked up through the hole in the ceiling. It was just a little bit buried, her feeling. For there overhead was that eight head of cattle, still stomping so hard it made the balls rattle. She felt as if they'd all been cursed and perhexed, and that cause would fall down into our bedroom next. But they on the roof stayed, and I wiped away the shred. Then I looked at that scary old bell schnickel yet. He had got to his feet and was brushing his britches, holding his sack and holding his switches. He was dressed all in black from his toes to his hat. And he frowned and he said, hey, what are you looking at? Ain't you never seen no Belschnickel before? Well, I had, but the others had come through the door. His beard was all stripping, as white as snowfall, and his belly so skinny, it nearly was all. I couldn't help thinking that this crabby guy could use a few dumplings and a shoe fly pie. His eyes, they looked angry. But though they seemed wild, then he looked at the kitties. He just sort of smiled, and then he wiped it away like he'd made a mistake. For him, some schnitz and kept mama should make. Then he asked all the kitties, have you been bad or sweet? If it's good that you've been, then I'll give you a treat. But if you've been bad, then I'll warm your britches with one of my special bad kitty switches. So they said they'd been good and they were telling the truth. Still, he glowered at Amos and grimaced at Ruth. He frowned down at Abner, who just kind of grinned. And the bell schnickle leaned down and tickled his chin. Ah, crabby I might seem, but don't you forget, I ain't never had to spank one kitty yet. It just must be something around in the air that makes kitties act better at this time of year. So his switches he dropped and he opened his sack and he handed out oranges and yo-yos and jacks and dolly for Ruth and a wood horse for Amos. We laughed as we watched him, and who could blame us? And finally he gave to Abner a teddy with that final gift to leave he was ready. And he said as he crawled out over shingles and sticks, I'll send over stone suits your broke roof to fix. Then he chomped the hole through up to his vein claw, and he yelled to his livestock, Get going! And nah! Down to the ground and without no complaint until we've got done and the house is all eight. They sprung off the roof to the yard way below where they got stuck in nearly 40 inches of snow. And that bell stickle yelled, brushing snow off his head. Merry Christmas, y'all! Now just go back to bed. The end. Merry Christmas.